Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the issue of stealing and I read this article about a person who was arrested for stealing a hundred dollars of cards and that kind of alerted me that it's either either Target, Walmart, or a local game store. It turns out to be Target. So he stole about a hundred dollars of cards from Target and when I was in elementary school slash middle school during the plane shift um, the plane shift, the original one, with the uh, 16 mana cost dragon who was the uh, front cover. I remember that. I had a friend who was younger, and he would always have these booster packs, and it turned out later that he stole them from Target. He would go after school. We had a Target in our neighborhood. He'd walk to Target, and then he would steal stuff from it every single time. He would take the cards, go to the bathroom, remove the uh, beep beep things, and then he would steal. So he had probably the best magic collection. And what he would do sometimes was he would sell booster packs to his friends, including me. And of course, we didn't know it was stolen. We just assumed that, oh, he opened the pack and took out the rare. And that's why it was opened and stuff like that. Essentially, this guy in College Station stole more than $100 of magic cards. He is 23 years old. And he was acting very... Uh, employees thought he was concealing merchandise in his clothes. When officers arrived, they reviewed security camera footage that showed Stevens removing cards from boxes of Magic the Gathering bundles and booster packs before going into the bathroom. Steven attempted to pay for only one box before exiting the store, where officers found cards worth $111.49 on his person, and this is a very common situation that I think happens in every Target and every Walmart. The, oh, I need to go to the bathroom uh, method. And then I come out of the bathroom and now, you know, these cards uh, are now hidden in my pants. This got me to thinking of why I didn't want, a lot of you ask, where's my store located? What, where's my store located? It's the same place. It's um, 3,500 square feet for $2,500 in rent. It's the same place as my marketing agency, and I don't want to do business there. It's kind of like a takeout place where you order online, and then you pick it up. And then there's no like further talking. There's no hangouts. It's not like a place to hang out and look at more merchandise. It's just almost like Starbucks. You come in, you get your coffee, and then you leave. And the reason I model it this way, and I would not be shocked if Rudy modeled it the same way, a lot of, when I looked at Rudy's store, it was a lot different. Uh, there's no employees, there's no FNM, there's no place to play magic. Uh, there's not, like, he's not encouraging people to come to his physical store to hang out because A, that's not profitable, and B, people steal stuff. And let me get to uh, the point very clearly. I live in an area that's really, really poor. Like, really poor. And this is not me imagining things. This is based on data. And I've shown you the data before. I've shown the data on the other channel. I live in a place called Umble. I live in a very nice neighborhood and my house is very big. And I think I've read, I have um, an old video of what my home used to look like, which is nice. I actually probably would need to watch that video because my home, I've added so much more crap to my home recently. So I kind of wonder what my old home looked like. Uh, the same home, but it was decorated incredibly differently from how, because now I own a e-commerce store, right? So I get to buy stuff that I don't need really cheaply. And now everything's decorated to, you know, there's not even a place for any, anything more because everything has been maxed out in terms of toys, right? But uh, back to my uh, rationale behind this, and maybe this is Rudy's rationale as well. Uh, when you're a small business and someone steals from you, it's devastating. It is very, very bad because your margins are not that good to begin with. You're not making a ton of money to begin with. And even if someone stole at Target, it's $111 is probably okay for Target. It's never okay. But if that was stolen from a small business, we don't even make $100. We don't even make $100 a day. Between the $15 an hour we pay at least eight hours a day, um, $120 a day that we pay our employee, uh, not our employee, our 1099, but after 90 days, she becomes employee. Therefore, our overhead is actually $22.50 for her. 
because 401k, medical insurance, all, all dental, all of this good stuff now has to be added on. Social security, unemployment. Um, so if you understand, if you've ever been a boss before, you know what I'm talking about. Your overhead. So 15 is what C gets an hour. But um, after all your overhead, you're paying more like 22 and a half. That's how I kind of do it. I do 50% of your salary is what we actually put into it. Matching 401k and all that good stuff. So we spend a lot of money. Um, let's say eight times 22 or let's just make it 20, $160. That in our margins are around 40%. So for us to make $160, we would need to sell at least $400 of stuff. Now, if $100 of stuff gets stolen from us, not only do we lose that sale, obviously, but we also lose that merchandise. So instead of selling $100 or $400 worth of stuff to break even, not including electricity, rent, or any of that, I mean, you're looking at at least $600 in sales to cover that we have to sell double that stuff because the things that we we're going to make money from actually are now gone and we have to reorder them at a loss. So I've been running the business for a while now and it is even under the um, Rudy method, I'll call it, with, no, with like limited employees, uh, lim no F&M, uh, and you're buying boxes the cheapest. I, I'm pretty sure the prices I'm buying at are very similar to what Rudy's buying. I can't imagine he's buying less than I am because I'm buying at uh, $2 a blister pack that sells for four bucks and $7 a Planeswalker deck that sells for like four, $12.99. Let's call it $12.99. And the Pokemon's pretty good too. And that's why I'm stocking up on Pokemon because it's, it's good. So my margins are not bad. My margins are 40% or sometimes 30% on Figma. But I love Figmas, so like uh, that's anime related. So the, the mar margins are anywhere between fifty percent to thirty to fifty percent. Um, that means for me to cover my employee expense without stealing, you need six hundred dollars. You need six hundred dollars of merchandise to sell a day. That's a tall order. That is a very tall order. Uh, five days a week. That's about three thousand dollars. That's Let's call it ten thousand dollars a month. A minimal, minimal that you we need to sell in terms of merchandise is ten thousand retail a month to break even. We're not anywhere close to that. And if someone steals from us, there's no way we get there because it's a double loss. You lost a sale, and then you lost the inventory. And by losing the inventory, you could lose future sales because maybe you don't have the stock that someone wants, and they go to Target or Walmart. And man, it just feels bad. It feels bad. At my old place, um, when I was in law school, I worked, um, I didn't work, I wasn't paid, but my friend owned a store called Groovy Geckos and people would steal stuff from that store all the time, promos and boxes and things would go missing all the time. And that's why the store went belly up because you're fighting an uphill battle you're fighting an uphill battle to begin with, and then when something gets stolen, if someone's willing to do this at Target and someone's willing to do this at Walmart with the concept of all of these cameras everywhere, right? Then yes, they're willing to do it at your local game store if you don't have cameras. And that's why for the most part, I'm not even worried about the game store stuff. I'm more worried about our computers, our laptops, and I would just be point blank with you. Some people that I've contacted, and want to sell me their collections or want me to sell them some stuff, I don't feel it's safe. Like, I don't feel it's safe to invite them over into a place where there's MacBooks and there's all types of really expensive electronics because A, they're selling their magic collection for much less than what it actually is worth because they're going to a game store. So they really need money. B, we live in a really bad part of town. Uh, our store is not in a great part of town. We all leave by six o'clock. And on Fridays, we work from my home because uh, there's an Iris bar. I think it's an Iris bar. I've been there a few times and the, the people are Iris, but I don't know if the bar itself is Iris. And then there's a really, really crazy crappy bar down the street. Um, now, you know, you can imagine what 
how rowdy things get at night. Uh, and we, we take our laptops to my home. So we work on Friday because we need our laptops and monitors to work. Therefore, everyone needs to bring it to the home office. And then we, my, I'm probably 20 minutes away from the actual office and we bring it back. So the area is not the best area. We actually had a place in the mall, the Greenpoint Mall. Google Greenpoint Mall, Houston, it has a nickname. The nickname was called Gunpoint. The reason that it's called Gunpoint is because every weekend people would shoot guns and somebody would die. I, I'm not, I kid you not, not every weekend someone would die, but every weekend someone would shoot guns. It would be lots of violence, the food court sucked, it's pretty much a dead mall. And that's where we were until we flooded out. So we're not like this huge, big business. We did have a downtown office when we had investors, but that wasn't, we weren't paying for that. We paid like $800 a month for rent. So of course we want our fancy downtown office, but when we didn't have investors, we had to try to look for new locations for our business. And you know, $2,500 is, is a lot for me. Um, it's a lot to pay. It's a beautiful, it's a, it's a beautiful place, but it is in a bad part of town. Uh, there's not a good part of Humble. And I know some people who live in Humble will say, oh, I've been here my entire life and it's safe and blah, blah. But look at the demographic. Just pull up the demographics. The average median salary in Humble is under 40000 I think one in every four people is below the poverty line. And there's homeless people everywhere asking for money. Uh, so it gets really dangerous at nighttime. So that's why, you know, I, I, my business model has to be the business model. Uh, we have to work from my home on Friday because who knows what's going to happen on weekend nights, you know, when someone looks at the store, oh, look, look, look at all these MacBooks. Oh, let's break in and stuff. And yes, we do have security cameras, but they're like 480p. I was looking at them and I was like, I can't make out anything. Um, you can you can make out some things which I'm not going to get into because some people will be offended, but other things you can't really make out. So yeah, that's why you know I get a lot of requests. Oh, I want to work for you. I want to work for you. But at the end of the day, like, do you really want to work for me? Because I don't think this I don't think this part of my business is going to last for more than a year. If I if it lasts for over a year, I would say good business. I don't expect it to last more than six months. I, initially, I expected it, it to go for a year. But now if we get past my birthday, which is July 1st, I would say, okay, this is a bucket list item done. And it's over. Anyway, uh, that's just interesting stuff. I don't know where I went with this video. I wanted to talk about this person stealing from Target. But then I got into my own story because I am very worried. I'm not going to lie. I am very worried about the um, business model because I knew I would bleed money. But it feels different. It's very different when you know that you're going to lose money and then you actually start bleeding money. Uh, it's not the same, obviously. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.